Okay, this is the P1 paper from October 2022. It's question seven, and it's a mixture of two different chapters here. It's the equations and inequalities, and it's also graphs and transformations. So a mixture of the two different ones here. Let's have a look at, um, there's a, more to the question here, but let's just look at the first part. So the first part says we've got this curve, figure one, and it says it goes through those four points there. Using figure one, find the range of values for which the function is going to be less than six. Okay, so because they've got the graph there, I'm quite happy to use the graph. If I can draw a line in then, that's just going to cut through those four points. Just move up slightly, so that's in, oops. So that's in the right place here, just there. Uh, what we're interested in is when is the function less than 6. So it's less than 6 there, and it's less than 6 there, and it's less than 6 there. So if I've got those bits, then my answer to part A, if fx is less than 6, then x is going to be less than minus 4. It's going to be between 1 and 2, and it's going to be greater than 3. Just have a look there again. Less than minus 4, between 1 and 2, and greater than 3. Yep, so I'm happy with that for part A. I wouldn't necessarily have all this information on there. Highlighter, obviously, I, I can do that. I wouldn't put that necessarily on an exam paper. Uh, they're only interested in the three answers that I've actually got here, so I'm happy with that for part B. Part A, sorry. Part B says, state the largest solution of the equation f of 2x equals 6. Right, so what does f of 2x do? f of 2x is a stretch parallel to the x-axis, and I, even though I'm calling it a stretch, it's a stretch scale factor, a half, which in effect means that this graph is all going to be squeezed in. Now, I don't need to worry too much about that. This is only a one-mark question, and they're saying, what's the largest solution? So I'm only interested in what happens to that point there. So f even though I don't know what the function is, um, if it's 3, 6 on fx for f2x, what's this part B? For f2x, it just says to state it. So what I would do is I would say fx, the point is 3, 6. So for f2x, the point would be, the x value is going to be half as big is going to be 1.56. Now already, I don't need all of that work particularly. Um, I just need the answer that x equals 1.5. That's only worth one mark. I did a little bit more explaining for you guys than actually I would have bothered to put onto the answer itself. It's a stretch scale factor half parallel to the uh, x-axis but in essence, what it means is that that value there, 3, 6, will become 1 and a half, 6. And that's what we were interested for part B. Part C, so let's get rid of someone working out here. Part C says, can I sketch the curve with the equation f minus x? Right, yeah, well, I know what f minus x does. f minus x, let's get rid of some of these bits f minus x simply means that all these values for positive x are actually going to occur down there and all these values for negative x are actually going to occur up there. So if I was to try and do that on this particular graph, I could do it just as a... Um, sort of an exercise, obviously I can't do this on the real thing, but what it means is we're gonna have that high point here being here, my maximum. 
we're going to have this little bit. You see where we've got a, a, um, a turning point there? That's got to happen on this side here. And then it's only going to go up to a turning point up there. So it's only going to go up and do that before it comes back down again. So now, look, this is the graph that I'm going to be trying to draw in a minute, really focusing on the fact that that's going to be a higher point. There's going to be a turning point here, and there's going to be a turning point there. I'm going to go and do that now. Obviously, I'll um, lose this screen when I'm doing all that, but that's my thought process to actually being able to do this bit. Now, let's see how well I can actually do it. Oh, there's going to be a bit of, uh, a bit of blank space here to do it. What's this? This is question... Um, C part one. Okay, so C part one. Let's draw out the axes. By all means, you can stop the video, go back, check what I've just done again there. We'll have a paper copy of the question. So what we're saying then is that it went up and came down here. And there needs to be that minimum there before I cut through the axis here. And that then when I go up again here, it's got to go higher than it was before and then come back down there. And then in terms of the question, what they're going to ask me is, yeah, change those points, the PQRS, work out what these four points are, because then that will make it clear to the examiner whether I actually understand what I'm doing here. So this one is going to be one six. This one is going to be four, sorry, four, six. This one is going to be minus two, six. And this one is going to be minus three, six. So they've all flipped over from what they were um, on the original graph. Quick comparison with what we had before. Okay. So that one's gone over there, that one's gone over there, this one's gone over here, this one's gone over here. Hopefully all of that makes sense to you. Um, right, so that's part C part 1 done. Hence find the set of values for which f of minus x is greater than or equal to 6 and x is less than naught. So on this new graph now, First of all, they said x is less than naught. So if x is less than naught, I'm only talking about those ones. And where is f of minus x greater than or equal to 6? Well, again, I suppose you can put the line on if you want. I'll try and put that in. Uh, we're talking then for just that bit there this time, okay, where... Um, Changing the colour. F of minus x is greater than or equal to 6. And x is less than naught. I'm not going to have this as part of my answer, but that is going to lead to x being between minus 2 and minus 3 here. That's my answer. Keep an eye out on whether they're less than or equal to or less thans. Uh, they're less thans in this case. And that's the final answer. I'm going to get rid of this bit here because I don't want to confuse anybody. So that's actually the answer for the question that they've given us there. Okay, hopefully, I'm just checking, that's everything, isn't it? Yeah, that, that makes sense. Good stuff.